Welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers are numbers that are the result of taking the square root of negative 1. So recall that when we do, when we work with square roots, something that was a perfect square was like 25. Well, because we were looking for numbers multiplied two times in a row that gave us this result. Well, we know that when we multiply a positive number times a negative number, we get a negative number. So, like negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25. And if we tried to take the square root of negative 25, well, we couldn't do it because we had this issue with the negative sign. So mathematicians came up with the concept of the imaginary number. And imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. We make that i. So that allows us to take the square root of a negative number. So essentially now we can take the square root of negative 25 and using our product rule that's like taking the square root of negative 1 times the square root of the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. Well the square root of negative 1 is i and the square root of 25 is 5 so our result is 5i. So the square root of negative 72, for example, would be 6i radical 2. That would be the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2. 6i radical 2. And interestingly enough, the square root of negative 1 squared or the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, well that's not 1, that is actually i squared, that's negative 1. Okay, we can't take this and say, well that's, that's not equal to the square root of negative 1 times negative 1. Okay, that's not the case here. So this really is i times i or i squared, which is negative 1. So let's take a look at this pattern a little more closely. So we know the square root of negative 1 is i. And we know that now that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is i squared, or negative 1. It's really the square root of negative 1 quantity squared. That makes sense. And i cubed then well, that would be i squared times i. Well, if i squared is negative 1 times i, well, then i cubed must be just the opposite of i. And let's keep going. i to the 4, well, that's i squared times i squared. Well, go back here. i squared was negative 1. So rewriting i squared, that'd be negative 1 times negative 1. Well, we know a negative 1 times a negative 1 is 1. All right. So now let's look at i to the 5th. Well, i to the 5th, using our laws of exponents, that's i to the 4th times i, which in i to the 4th we just saw is 1, and i is, well, it's i, so that's 1 times i, or i, which is right back where we started before. And that pattern continues to proceed again. So we repeat this pattern. So as it turns out, i to the 6th is the same as i to the 2nd, which is negative 1. And i to the 7th is the same as i to the 3rd. And i to the 8th is the same as i to the 4th. So, we cycle through the pattern every fourth power of i. So, i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i to the first. 
or pardon me, i to the fifth is i to the fourth one time through the cycle times i to the first, which is i. Now i to the twenty-third, something like that, we've gone through the cycle five times plus an extra three. So i to the twenty-third is i to the fourth, because that's one cycle, raised to the fifth power, which is four times five is twenty, so that's twentieth, and then times i to the third. So i to the twenty-third is the equivalent of i to the third, or the opposite of i. Try i to the thirty-eighth. Well, let's see. Divide that by four. Uh, Thirty-six is divisible by four, so that's i to the fourth nine times through the cycle times i squared, because that gets me to 38, that's 36 plus 2 is 38, and we know i squared is negative 1. So i to the 38th is negative 1. And i to the 20th, well, that's i to the 4 raised to the 5th power, so it would be 5 times through the cycle, and the last number in the cycle is i to the fourth, and we could look at this as times one, and i to the fourth five times through is one, and one times one is one, so that's one. So that is a look at different exponents of i and, and running through that same pattern. That'll take a little bit of getting used to. But let's go back to our original types of problems here. We'll do some samples. So now we can simplify the square root of negative 36. That is simply the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1, which is 6i. The square root of negative 44, uh, we've got a perfect square factor in 44, which would be 4, so it's the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 11, so the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of negative 1 is i, radical 11. And then the square root of negative 7, well that one's pretty easy, hopefully you see that is just i, radical 7. Now, as I continue through this, notice that these are all square roots, obviously not a cube root, but not even a fourth root or a sixth root. It doesn't work for any even root. This is only for square roots. Okay, so sometimes we get confused. We see the cube root of a negative number, cube root of negative number, and we automatically think, uh, oh, i is involved there. So be careful. The cube root of negative 8, well, that doesn't involve i. That's simply negative 2. Okay. A lot of times um, people will incorrectly simplify that and might call that like 2i. Well, that is not correct. So i has nothing to do with cube roots, only square roots. Let's do some multiplying. The square root of negative 12, the square root of negative 6. Well, we can't make this the square root of a positive 72, okay? This does not equal the square root of negative 12 times negative 6. So it does not equal the square root of 72. But it does equal the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. So square root of negative 12 is 2i radical 3, and the square root of negative 6 is just i radical 6. So, ooh, this one's a little bit longer. So, now I can take the square root of 3 times the square root of 6. That is the square root of 18, but also be careful with i times i. 
well, what is i squared? It's negative 1. So we have 2i squared times radical 18. I should have left myself a little more room here, which is negative 2, because i squared is negative 1, and the square root of 18 is 3 radical 2, so we get a negative 6 radical 2. So a little bit different. So let's took at, take a look at negative radical negative 6 times radical negative 5. Well, that's i radical 6 times i radical 5. I times I is I squared. Now we can multiply those. Radical 30. Uh, there's no perfect square in 30. So we get, we know I squared is negative 1. So the opposite of radical 30. And I think I will save this one for you to do that one and, and bring that to class. I think you can handle that one. Now let's take a look at some division. The square root of negative 80 over the square root of negative 5. Well, let's go ahead and take the i out right away. So we take our square root of negative 1 out. We get i radical 80 over i radical 5. Well, this is divisible by 10, so there's going to be a radical 5 factor inside 80. And of course, i over i those are going to simplify and become 1. So this problem becomes simply becomes radical 80 divided by radical 5. So radical 80 can be split into this radical 16 times radical 5 all over radical 5. Our radical 5's cancels. Our i's have already canceled. And our final answer is 4. And we can do the similar thing with radical 40, radical negative 40, the square root of negative 40 over the square root of 10. Uh, we take our i out, and the square root of 40, I can make that now the square root of 4 times the square root of 10 all over the square root of 10. Our square root of 10s cancel, and we have i radical 4, which simplifies to 2i. In these last problems, these are very similar to what we did in earlier in the video. i to the 28th, we want to see what that is the equivalent value of. Well, that's i to the 4th, because the cycles, there's four exponents of i in one cycle, and that's 7 times. 4 times 7 is 28, so there's really no remainder, just 1, and we know that the end of the cycle is 1, so that's 1 times 1, so that equals 1. i to the 19th is i to the 4th. Well, how many times through the cycle? 4 times through, but we still have another i cubed left. So i cubed is, well, if we know what i squared is negative 1, so it's i cubed times i, so our final answer is negative 1i, which really is the opposite of i. Probably should have circled that instead of negative 1i. i to the negative 9th, this is a little bit more challenging. This is not a negative number, this is a reciprocal. So this is the equivalent of 1 over i to the ninth. And now we do the same thing, but our i to the ninth here is in the denominator. So i to the ninth is i to the fourth, two times through the cycle, times i, which leaves us with just 1 over i then. And that really is not what we want. We've got a square root in the denominator. Um, I'm going to show this in a next video, but in this case, we want to get i out of the denominator. So we multiply top and bottom by i, 
which leaves us with i over i squared, which is negative 1. So our final answer here is the opposite of i. And that wraps up our discussion on imaginary numbers, and we will see you in class.